I'm currently working with my client to vet some of these potential tenants that could potentially be her tenants. And here are five things that you must do if you are a landlord looking for a new tenant. In our current day and time and economy, I'm sorry to say it, there is a lot of fraudulent activities going on and that does not escape the rental market. So here are some things that you should be doing as a landlord to protect yourself. I want to be upfront to say these aren't always red flags, but When you see them, your spidey senses should start kind of looking at it like, hmm, something might be off here. So be really vigilant and look further into it. So here are some of the things that you should be looking for. One, if all the paperwork's not together, it doesn't seem like the biggest deal. But what I've been experiencing is potential uh, tenants and their agents sending me over offers and supporting documents with some of the things missing. So I can't actually vet your clients properly. Why that's important? Let's just say the credit report is missing and they just give me a credit score. If you look at someone's credit score, it's not indicative of whether they can actually afford a property. So let's say someone has a credit score of 750. But if you actually got the report, you see that their debt ratio, they're holding like $100,000 worth of debt. That's not necessarily a good sign, only because based on how much they make, you want to kind of think about, can they actually afford this property? So only showing me the credit score does not paint the whole picture I need the full report. Okay, that leads me into the second part. If someone gives you a a package, an offer, and documents are missing, and you go to be like, hey, can I get the full report? And you receive pushback, that's a big red flag. Very big red flag. And I want you to know that. Um, I experienced a lot of not even the potential tenants, but rather their agents, actually saying to me, you know, you digging, that's really invasive. And that frankly is shocking to me because if the tables were turned and you were the listing agent rather than the buyer agent, you should be doing the same. Your job is to protect your client. So there's no such thing as invasiveness when you are potentially letting a tenant reside in your property. Because now more than ever, there is a lot of tenant squatting. So you do the work beforehand to make sure that your client, your landlord, doesn't end up in that position. You make sure to do the research before anyone takes tenancy. This one doesn't seem like a red flag, but I assure you, be weary. Any offers that are asking for a longer tenancy, this typically should not be a red flag. But analyze it from this perspective. If you are the landlord, and even if these tenants are absolutely incredible, they have employment, they have employment letters, everything checks out. Consider the fact that life does happen. We just came out of COVID, right? You accepting a longer tenancy, you never know what can happen. They could be fully employed for for the first year and in the second year, they lose their job. You now have them locked in. As a landlord, you don't really want that, especially because after the first term, which is typically a year, the, the agreement goes month to month regardless. I'm sorry to say, in these sort of circumstances, the tenant does have most of the security. Um, the tenant's the one that if you wanted to get into your own property, it's not as easy as you may think. But on the other hand, if the tenant wants to leave, they just need to give 60 days. So take the time to consider what it means to go into a longer term tenancy and the benefits of just going into one year. 
Now, I will say, I understand why people, aka potential tenants, are pushing for longer tenancies. Everyone's looking for a long tenancy now because the market does have a little bit of turmoil in it. So a lot of uh, landlords are selling. That in turn means they're asking a lot of their tenants to leave. So tenants now are trying to secure themselves and asking for a longer tenancy. So leave it to the one-year term. Landlords, please do not feel pressured or rushed to accept an offer. How about you get a little strategic and make it a conditional offer? Conditional upon taking the time to actually verify someone's employment, someone's credit report, someone's past references. I can't tell you how much in this current economic situation, people are actually submitting fraudulent documents. Either they don't actually have that employment letter, or they're not employment employed at that company. Either how much they're claiming to make is inaccurate. Credit scores aren't, aren't what they say they are. So, Take the time to vet your potential tenant and make sure that what is on paper is actual and factual. So with that being said, that sums up our last point. Be very vigilant on verifying all of your potential tenants' documents to avoid potential fraud. If you have any questions, and this seems like a lot of work, and as a landlord, you're not really interested in it, in it, I'm here for you. Hire me and I will do all the dirty work.